everybody. Uh, my name is Claire Fenelow. I'm the Executive Director at EVCOM. Um, we'd like to welcome you to this um, EVCOM sessions. Uh, this week we're focusing on being freelance in the current climate. Um, just to explain a little bit about how we're going to do this, um, we're asking you to bear with us. Uh, we're very new to this, so um, we are learning as we go. Um, so uh, we're, we're asking that you um, uh, allow for any uh, technical uh, hitches we may have along the way. But just so that you understand the format, um, we're allowing about 40 minutes uh, for chat. And then um, if you want to post questions into the chat facility, we're going to allow about 10 to 15 minutes at the end. Um, and myself and my colleague, Amelia, will then put those questions to the panel. So, so we'll select so that there isn't too much duplication and so on, and we'll, and we'll batch them into groups just to make it easier for the panel to deal with. Um, uh, we will uh, just monitor, we're gonna allow about 10 minutes per subject. Um, but as I say, uh, we, we're sort of doing this as we go along. We'll see how we go. Any resources that are offered and any suggestions will be gathered and kept and will be posted on our website after the event. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to um, Sarah Cooper from Plastic Pictures um, and she will introduce the rest of the panel to you and uh, I hope you have an enjoyable um, session and we'll catch up with you all later. Thank you Claire for um, outlining that. Um, this is the first webinar I've ever hosted so um, let's see how we go. Um, so my name's Sarah Cooper. Um, I um, am the co-founder of Plastic Pictures. Um, now I wanted to facilitate this um, webinar for freelancers um, because as a small business owner, Plastic Pictures, we have about 20 full-time staff, but we also rely constantly on a talented world-class pool of freelancers who contribute massively enormously to the success of our services and our creative output so um, on behalf of plastic pictures and many other production companies out there um, we are very empathetic towards um, you all at the moment and we're hoping that this session um, can throw up some useful ideas and um, there'll be a commitment at the end um, which we want to pledge to you as well um, so that's precisely why I wanted to facilitate this session, a show of solidarity um, that employers um, and not just Plastic Pictures, but many of the other top 50 production companies and Evcom are thinking about you and we cannot do what we do without you. Um, so I will, um, would be my honour to introduce our, um, our panellists. Um, I will just start to share my screen so you can see people's names. That's the right. All right. Hopefully, everybody can see that. So, um, myself, uh, we have Tim Langford, who's a freelance filmmaker. Give us a wave, Tim. Here I am. Uh, Gavin Buxton Knight, who's a freelance um, film writer and director. And unfortunately, we've had um, a, a very last minute um, dropout um, from Jenny, who um, uh, needed to go um, to hospital. She's okay though, it's all right. Um, so we have Laura Cole, who is a freelancer from the event side. Um, and uh, trust me, I think the event side are feeling this more than the film side. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, we wanted to sort of spend um, about 30 minutes covering off some, some key topics. And that is um, what what you can do or some suggestions of um, what you can do with your downtime now. Um, also how production companies and freelancers can work together during this time and, and post COVID as well. And then just sort of talk about what next really, um, some predictions and, um, and how we can kind of move forward as well to create a, a tighter community for freelancers. So, um, we can sort of be a little bit more um, connected uh, moving forward in the future. Um, so um, firstly, I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there. I'm not on the government COBRA team. I really only know as much about the government advice as it evolves from the website, the government website, as, as you do. Um, 
So in terms of discussing things like um, furloughing and uh, all that sort of things, I, I really am not a specialist in that subject. However, um, I do want to point you into the direction of a Facebook group that was set up about a week ago by my own, um, by Plastic Pitch's own finance and operations controller. Um, her name's Nula. She set this up in her spare time. It's called Finance Advice for Freelancers and Small Businesses During COVID. Um, there's 156 members already and it's been quite active. So I can only suggest that um, if you want to um, uh, sort of connect with other freelancers and, and follow that thread, that there'll be some very interesting um, discussions happening on that Facebook group. Um, so, so that is my disclaimer. I'm sorry, I really don't know any more than, than everybody else in this situation. Um, so really what we want to do is during this session, um, sort of engage the wider community, hear about your ideas. Um, this webinar's less about the have nots and more about offering sort of enabling thoughts and suggestions. So our panelists um, and of course yourself will have something valuable, useful, or uplifting to share, then, then please put it in the comments box as well and that will be monitored. Um, but, you know, above all now more than ever, we really want to hear um, about moments of, of sort of real progress that we can all relate to and be inspired by and learn from as we navigate all of this together. Um, okay, so we'll, we'll crack on. Um, this crisis is impacting all of us in, in ways that we couldn't have imagined. Um, although I run plastic pictures equally, I'm trying to juggle a job with my eight-year-old son and a daughter who's still sitting in his pajamas. So um, that's telling you uh, uh, how good a job I'm, I'm doing at being a mum right now. Um, uh, so it's affecting us in all sorts of ways. Um, and I think it's important to remember that um, we're all at our best when we sort of come together, collaborate and share. Um, so I'll start to move into our, our session and, um, and talk about how creativity can, can move us forward. And I ha have been doing a bit of prep with our, with our panelists, Gavin and, and Tim and Laura, and we want to talk about downtime ideas. So I think the most positive outcome that um, we can jump to, and certainly one that I'm hoping for, that once the restrictions are lifted, um, we'll be able to just dive back into all the productions that were postponed and cancelled. And, you know, my intuition is that, um, that I expect it to be busier than ever and that I won't be taking a summer holiday at all. And, and in fact, I'll be telling my staff that they can't take summer holidays. Um, so, so I think that's the most positive outcome. The issue with that being that everybody else is, is, is going to be kind of doing the same and it'll be this big bottle, bottleneck. Um, so I think the idea is sharing idea, ideas on how we convert our downtime now into go time later so we can kind of get ahead and, and get you ahead. Um, so when the, the productions do start um, happening, you, you already have your foot in the door and that you've, you're maintaining those connections. Um, so I, I wanted to sort of hand over to perhaps Gavin first to um, talk about some of the ideas or what you've been doing in your downtime to ensure that when we're all sort of free, the go time's effective. Yes, um, I've been speaking to a few freelancers I know who are not EVCON members and um, a lot of them have been uh, getting sort of, in one word, getting teched up. Um, you know, whether you've got a website, most, most cameramen leave their websites very out of date so they can do new showreels, put new work up there. But it's not just about websites. Um, it's about getting into social media and digital media. The world is running at the moment on a digital platform. So if you haven't got a LinkedIn account and you're doing business communications, this is the time now, even if you're a freelancer who doesn't have direct access to those business clients, to build a, a, a LinkedIn profile. Instagram, if you're a camera and a photographer, it'd be absolutely crazy for you not to have an Instagram account. Make it up to date, make it as, you know, as, as, as advanced as you can possibly show. And also join those, those, those organizations, those networks that can help you. I'm, I'm happen to be based in Bristol. I'm a member of Bristol Media. They are fantastic at doing networking events and, and sharing information. They've got a whole load of stuff on there at the moment about free resources for, for, for people like me. And, um, and also, if you're a member of a, an organization that's actually funding you, well, I, I know I used to be a member of the talent manager, and the talent manager has a lot of broadcast jobs and they advertise all the time. 
get your profile on 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 platforms like that there are quite a few out there i know that people use but get your your cv and your plat on and, and your profile on those platforms looking really good so that you're 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 ready to go when 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 the travel ban is lifted um great thank you laura any suggestions what are you doing when you're downtime um, well, I think like all freelancers, we all work towards our strengths when we're, we're working for clients. And so what I try to focus on is actually areas where I'm weak and I feel that I maybe could be improving on. Um, so for in my industry, it could be the safety of an event and those key areas. So I've been looking at online courses. There's a lot of free webinars and online courses at the moment that are um, available. I've been looking at that. I've been speaking a lot with my fellow freelancers and just keep in touch with my clients because it's important to keep our name out there and to keep in touch with them and check in with them so it's it's also just nice to know that everyone else is feeling it too and to get positivity from everyone and get advice from people who are maybe stronger in the areas that you feel you're weaker i think that's a really great suggestion laura it's all about um upskilling and continuous learning and learning, unlearning and, and relearning what you already know. And I think um, before COVID, we were always, always so busy and it's so hard to find time to learn something new or to um, upskill yourself. And now is the perfect opportunity to start um, sort of ticking those things off of, of all the things that you wanted to, to sort of take part in, but never had the time to because you're working 24 seven, especially in events. Um, Tim, how are you using your time? Um, well. First thing, I think actually the first thing I want to say is the nature of being a freelance. I've always thought, <clears throat> excuse me, we are incredibly flexible, resourceful, adaptable people. We're like a kind of species to me. And I kind of think, so it's kind of thinking about how can I take what I know? How can I adapt? How can I be flexible? How can I think a little bit differently? In the same way that when I think over the years, all the different people and the clients that I've worked with in different, very different situations of their own demands, and there's that part of your mind, your brain, that's kind of, I think, has, has become very kind of reflexive and so on. So I think as freelancers, we actually have a certain advantage from that point of view. So what have I been doing? I guess, first of all, it was like a kick up the backside for me because, frankly, I was partly going through my own social isolation before all this kicked off. And what it forced me to do was just, number one, talk to people. <laughs> It sounds, it sounds a bit bizarre, but to message people in lots of different ways, to call people up, to email them and so on and so forth. So I've ended up having these conversations with all sorts of people. Some of, a lot of them are, are, are self-employed and they're people that actually, frankly, I've lost touch with. So I found that really, really helpful. It's been helpful for my kind of sense of my mental health in all this. It's really helped and it's also helped just making a connection and um just getting that bit of support or the support that you give each other in lots of different ways really so that's 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 one aspect the other thing is i've got a mantra and it's i suppose it sounds a bit pretentious but it's for me it's like it's about make something write something share something create something and i started i went back through all my old films which i've got loads and i just started um, putting them out there again and writing little stories about them because it seems to me that quite a lot of the work that I've done in the past it seemed to be quite relevant to what was going on here so I suppose you might say that's kind of a form of marketing is a kind of been me sort of trying to put myself back in the arena as well and I've really enjoyed the feedback you know so I found that really satisfying yes I've been enjoying your Tim flicks yes yeah. Tim flicks. I was, I was going to pick up on that, Tim, so I, I've been enjoying them as well. The, the, the other thing that I think um, people should, should consider is, is don't, don't focus on what you can't do now. But focus on what you can do. So obviously for me, I'm a, mainly a director, but I'm also a writer. So at the moment, I'm pushing myself as a writer. And I've actually got some, some commissions to do some, some quite odd writings. I'm writing a speech for somebody who's going to do a speech on Zoom because, you know, they want to, to, to present themselves very well. So if, if you have a skill, you have a load of skills, pick the ones that you can concentrate um, on and deliver now. 
you know, and if it's editing a film with existing material or doing things that deliver, still deliver a project in our, in our industry without, without, um, you know, getting around these, these, these restrictions, then, then, then you can still do that. I would also like to add something into the mix as well. Um, I think, you know, I think if you work with a, a company quite a lot and you, you work on a particular client quite a lot, I would say don't wait for a brief to come to you. Now is the time where you could be brainstorming on um, ideas that you could be proposing to that client in the future. So. Um, you know, I've been emailed by almost every single company that I've ever had contact with telling me about how they're handling COVID. And I know that there's going to be so many stories that come out the back of this, whether it's um, a company wanting to tell how great their employees were during this time or, or whatever. I, I, I do think there's opportunity to start thinking about potential ideas that could go into production that you know that you haven't received a brief for already um be proactive with those ideas with the producers that you know or the execs that you know or, or whoever and and feed those ideas up to them um you know because it now is the time to be able to work on I ideas when you haven't been issued a, a brief basically um and that's sort of how i'm starting to trying to keep some of my freelancers um as well is saying listen you know i haven't got a brief but start thinking about what we could do on the other side of this as well uh, particularly for freelancers who know who know my clients and, and brands quite well um i think there was another um suggestion gavin you made the other di uh, the day about having a press card oh yeah so so um, i i think um you know there are shoots still going on out there um one of the cameramen i know is doing quite a lot of multi-camera work he happened to have bought some new equipment just before um the uh the the lockdown where he can operate uh three three cameras um as as one individual it's those the automatic cameras that you get in studios but he he's got a, a mobile unit and it's it's basically been booked out um constantly ever since the lockdown and uh you know he goes to the shoots and he he observes social distancing uh, as required but you know sh shoots don't stop in this circumstances technically media activities are allowed to continue in this situation because this broadcast news and communication is vital um in in in, in this process that we're going through so anybody who's got a press card um can legally work and i would argue that you know, if you're making a film for a food manufacturer or a food retailer or an NHS trust at the moment, that is probably more important work than anything you're going to see on the on the TV or on, and on, on the news at the moment. So you can legitimately push back if you are challenged by the police about why you're out and about with your, with your film gear, because you, you are doing vital communication work for whatever organisations commissioned you. You know, they're not going to ask you to do this, you know. If it isn't essential that the chief exec of Sainsbury's gets out there and, and, and says says things to his staff about how they're going to cope with the, the current increase in their activity, so you know if if it's there and you can do it, go ahead and do it. It's, it's, that's my advice. And if you've got a press card, it makes it a lot easier. You, they won't be able to challenge you. I just want to add to that that I got a message the other day by um, a cameraman who's got a van locally in North London, and he's. He's been doing voluntary work. He's been delivering uh, food pack parcels and so on. But he said to me, look, I've got my camera gear here in the boot. If you want to shoot something, if you want me to start shooting something, if you've got an idea, then I'm here. I'm out and about, you know. And I think he's got the, he's got the right to press card and all the rest of it. So I'm sure there's people out there who would like to make themselves available to, you know, to work with, with us. I mean, because the other thing is, as Sarah pointed out, I think there's all manner of documentaries waiting to be made, and no doubt some are, are being made right now as we talk. Uh, and we could all think of lots of different, you know, uh, stories to tell. But there's, there's part of the the business we're in here. We're about ideas. We're about seeing opportunities. And and you know, this is an opportunity to tell so many different kinds of stories, both you know, and and 
many of those are about all the companies that uh, you know the corporate sector um, and how how employees and so on are dealing with the situation how the company's dealing with the situation and so on and I'm quite sure they're going to want to tell their story once once we're further down this road absolutely um, I mean some of these ideas might seem obvious perfect time to learn and upskill yourself take a master class etc perfect time to update your show reel um, your CV um, your digital online presence, um, you know, really um, proactively PRing yourself. Um, so they might all seem like obvious ideas, but um, you know, the perfect perfect time to do them. And um, and if you are a creative or a writer or a director, then you know, coming up with potential ideas to pitch into the various clients that you work for um, proactively rather than than waiting around. Or a brief um, and did I say learning yes I did okay <laughs> um, so thank you we're gonna move on to um, our next sort of um, sub subheading in a way um, I think over the last few weeks we've all adapted to new ways of working um, certainly expanded my comfort and capability with remote working and, and all things tech um, and have downloaded lots of different apps etc but what can production companies and the freelance community learn from each other over this time? Um, some of the, I'll, I'll start just to, to kick things off. So an example is um, at the moment, because we don't have um, such clarity on our business pipeline, um, you know, normally we were able to sort of predict potentially three months into, into the future of what projects will come in and when they're likely to hit and, um, you know, we're able to manage our cash flow a little bit better. Um, but with the uncertainty, uh, we're having to sort of be a little bit more flexible. So one of the things that we've started to do with some of our freelancers who are able to is um, to, to charge, they're charging, um, they've agreed to, to bill on an hourly rate, uh, which is great because at some point, sometimes we just um, can't kind of book someone for a whole day. Um, now that might not work for, for everybody, but particularly for, for editors or um, producers who are maybe straddling multiple projects where they don't need to dedicate a whole day to that particular client, they're willing to tot up their hours at the moment. It's, it's still their day rate, but it's um, just a more flexible way of, of managing the workflow um, that gives a little bit of flexibility by the side. So, that's that's one thing that plastic pictures have started doing with our freelance community so i don't know if anybody has thought about contacting um the companies that they work for regularly and saying look i'd be happy to work on a on an hourly rate if, if that works for you um Tim? yeah sorry sorry yeah i was just going to say that's precisely what i've done um there's a company i know they're not in the uk and I know that they are struggling financially, but they got in touch with me about a pitch. And normally I'd make a charge for writing it. I've, you know, I basically wrote a spec uh, for them on the basis that, you know, maybe come September, October, um, they'll have a project waiting for me, uh, a paid gig, basically. Um, and yes, I in suppose. Good faith, then, Tim, you've written it in good faith. I've written it in good faith. Uh, and sometimes, these conditions that's kind of what you have to do or at least that's what i decided to do anyway yeah. uh laura hi uh, yeah I, I think um you mentioning being flexible is just so important right now um for for my industry all the events that were taking place the first six months of this year and are postponed to the autumn winter periods fingers crossed um and so i've got a lot of clients now that actually they can't afford to make payments at all um, for contracts that I was already signed up to do. So I've I've had to personally take a hit and say, okay, no pay for the next three months, but there's the guarantee that come September, you know, that I will be paid regardless of whether the event goes ahead or not. So it's just trying to remain flexible and, and stay on the good side of the people you work on as well, because it, I, do, I do really think that you will benefit from doing that and that you're, you're I, I feel that you're sticking to the forefront of their mind if they then need more people to help them. They'll, they'll lean on you more. 
Yeah, it's sort of, um, you know, you know who you can um, rely on in the tough times. Yeah. To, um, you know, and I think equally in that measure, you know, I'm accepting jobs at the moment that I would never normally agree to, you know, whereas, you know, I'm, we're sort of breaking even on a lot of jobs, um, which, which will eventually mean that we're not breaking even because they always, they always run over, don't they? But, um, but as a way to keep people employed at the moment. So even if we're able to break even on a job, it means that we can carry on employing a freelancer for, you know, a, a, another week or another two weeks. Um, so I think it, it really is about being flexible and sort of not so much looking at the short term, which I know is a really difficult thing to do, but sort of looking at it at the long term. And that's certainly what we're trying to do at Plastic Pictures. Um, yeah, we would never normally accept jobs where we wouldn't make any money, but at the moment it's just about turning over and being able to carry on paying people. Um, you know, and I, I think with with all of our freelancers we we always try and pay those people first um and thankfully we've been able to do. um but it, it i think just talking openly with whoever you have invoices out with and letting them know your situation if there's anything they can do even if it might be paying um part 25 percent of that invoice or 50 percent of that invoice normally people are or, or finance departments whoever manages that further up the chain is is normally quite sympathetic to that um, and equally if I think if you are accepting new contracts you might want to um, discuss up front your um, terms and payment terms and conditions so if you do get a week's worth of work or, or whatever then um, you know we're open to paying people within seven days um, whereas usually our payment fees and fees would be 30 days so um, just asking whether there's flexibility on your payment terms and conditions um, is, 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 is great too. Um, uh, Gavin, how, how are you experiencing new ways of working? Yeah, um, I was just going to pick up on your, on your, um, sort of points about cash flow. I've, I've, I've just done, um, a couple of jobs and I really, really appreciated the, um, the, the fastest I've ever been paid in fact by, um, the, the two, uh, um, companies involved and you know that was that was an open discussion i i just said to them you know is, is it possible and normally my terms of payment are 28 days and and you know they both paid me with with on one in seven days and one in 14 days which is which is just really really great for me and you know i think for other freelancers um or even even production companies who may be listening i don't know who's who's, who's tuned into this but you know that is cash flow is really important for you and also for individuals probably more so um and uh you know there's no harm as a freelancer having that conversation saying you know in one case i just said has the client paid its job and they'd happen to have paid everything up front and so i just said well can you pay me now and they just said yeah we can pay you and and that was the one that was paid in seven days so that that's fantastic um I, what i've tried to do in in terms of new ways of working is concentrate on my writing because obviously i can't go out and do location shooting or I haven't been asked to do much location shooting um, at the moment. So pushing my script services for people who are doing animation and, um, and you know, again, just thinking about what I can do and, and looking at other other writing that I can do for other other uses. So I used to write a lot of presenter scripts for the videos that I was making, but that's very similar to a speech and a lot of people, a lot of senior, um, you know, execs out there having to go on things like this and do speeches or, or or manage sessions online and sometimes they want help in, in those kind of um, circumstances and it's just the same as writing a script for a presenter so I, I managed to you know, get, get involved with that. I think I just want to add is the bigger picture here and you know whether you're an employer or, or a freelancer strikes me about what we're all been going through is we're we're kind of codependent you know we really do need each other and i know you can argue well some people are in weaker and some are in stronger situation uh, positions right now but essentially we're this you know we're this multifaceted network and we're all connected and i know this sounds a bit it sounds a bit hippie like but it just strikes me that's we do need each other and um the heart of that is a trust isn't it and when you work with clients there's always that sense that you're being you know entrusted with their brand you're, you you're trusted to carry through an idea and i do think trust is at the heart of what we do 
and that's very much about the relationship between the freelancers and um, clients and freelancers and employers really it's just something we should keep in mind I think because that's the glue that's that's the glue that's connecting us here more so than ever I think I think that's um, a really nice segue into our next topic, um, Tim, um, and that's what what's next. Um, it, I mean, look, there's there's no crystal ball at the moment, no oracle. Um, you know, I, I think that regular office life is is going to go through changes. It's certainly shown me that my workforce doesn't necessarily all need to be in the same physical space. Although I know we like to be, but it has. Um, given me confidence that the people who do need more flexibility in their roles and who are wanting to work from home more are actually valuable at home um, and i think that's eliminated that sort of doubt that i had of people working from home and how effective they are um, so i think there's going to be um changes that's going to go beyond covid and and this could also be really the moment where self-employment is, is is reshaped for for years to come really um, you know, I think um, uh, you know we've been we've been seeing more and more. You know, largely because because I think there'll be more freelancers. In fact, because I think a lot of people from this will not want to put all their eggs in in one basket and work for one company, thinking that perhaps if that company goes down, then there's no other resource. So I actually think that there might be a surge in, in freelancers. Um, but I also think you know, as you were talking about Tim. You know, I, I um, personal Plastic Pictures has a, a has a black book of, of freelancers that we like to work with, and we're often so busy and blinkered that we continue to use those freelancers. And I think because we do that, because there seems to be um, a lack of a a central database or a or a um, oh sorry, that's just my timer going off, um, or a lack of a central resource where we can meet where we can find names of new people. Um, and I think I think it would be um, maybe ways of moving forward and what next is is how can we kind of create a more connected corporate freelancer circle where people like me or other production companies um, can find people easily or and and equally on the other flip side of that that you can all talk to each other better and I don't know complain about how one company's or shit at paying people on time than another or whatever have your own sort of private moans about things uh or we right, talk about that a lot <laughs> <laughs> um yes uh, thankfully i we pay our people on time so i don't i hopefully not part of that conversation but um but yeah i think i think um you know there's a lot i know that there's a lot of um tv uh, you know used to come from tv and i know that there's a lot of um t dedicated tv groups of um TV professionals, etc., but there doesn't seem to be one for the corporate industry. And there's so many great talent out there. And I actually think making corporate films is harder than making TV. And so the the producers are the producers and the people that work in um, and the filmmakers and sound and everybody who works in corporate is is um, a much trickier job. Um, and I think how can we start to create this kind of this virtuous circle in a sense? Um, Gavin, what, what do you think? Yeah, I, th I think, uh, you know, I think, I think it, it's a tough one because, because, you know, technically freelancers are quite, you know, I, I do know a lot of other directors. We don't all meet up because we're sort of competitors and it, it's a, it's a very strange one, but I think through something like Evcom and I, I don't know how many members are, are freelancers, there is an opportunity to, to, perhaps expand that that that, that and, you know the events that i've been to where i meet other females I, i've always really enjoyed it and i think the certainly the evcom has been one place where i do that as i said before there are other channels to do to do that kind of activity and it is really really useful to compare notes um and and bristol media is very good in the creative um service you know the creative companies in that area and they they do a lot of very good events Laura, is there a um, a group that um, the events professionals use um, to talk to one another? Is it helpful? What What's your experience? 
Yeah, um, I must say actually the events industry as a whole has been extremely supportive. We have a couple of large associations for our industry um, and as soon as the lockdown happened, they kind of reached out to all freelancers and offered to do um, a, a freelance portfolio in the next edition of the magazine that was available online and mailed out to a lot of people. Um, so I became a part of that. There's another association that every week is now showcasing a freelancer. Um, it's a one page of a website where they've been asked certain questions, they can promote themselves and that will be on that platform for a week and it will go to the next person who's been nominated. Um, so that, that's just been really nice because everyone's talking to each other. And I don't know if there's something similar for you in your industry, but I think collectively, if you if you can all get together and approach an association or organisation with this idea, if there's enough of you, then they will look to do it and support you because ultimately freelancers help the industry so much. As you say, we have so much knowledge collectively. We all rely on each other and work together very closely. Um, that would, I mean, it's worked really well for me the last few weeks. I've been extremely grateful for the support I've had. I think, you know, thinking about EVCOM here and the role of EVCOM, I mean, I mean that sounds absolutely brilliant, uh, Laura, what you're saying. I think, you know, we need to be proactive in, uh, in, with freelancers in, in EVCOM. We need to be proactive in terms of offering a platform, a window for what we do and opportunities to get in front of people, whether we're doing that by the means of Zoom or eventually, hopefully we can do it, you know, face to face we could be building that network now um, and there's a great opportunity here and there's a real need I think uh, for this. There's an idea I've had just in freelancers just thinking generally and that is just back to this thing about skills and that, that maybe what we need is some kind of pact as it were between us as freelancers and you know for example the things I'm not very good at um, and the things I guess I hope I'm better at and it's whether we can have some kind of shared skills base, for example, so that you kind of offer a, a quid pro quo where you say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll teach you this in exchange for, you know, something else. So there's no money passing hands, but what there is is skills and knowledge that are being a kind of exchange. And for me, that's also about then sort of building a kind of um, a network people, a network of shared skills, things that you can pass on. So on. Of course, it has to be done on trust and so on. But uh, it's an old fashioned idea and it doesn't involve money. There's actually been something like that um, for myself as well. A group of us have got together because the likelihood is that so many events will clash later on in the year. There's not going to be enough people to do all the events that you would normally do. So it's a trust network of, OK, if I cannot do this, level of work could you help me here what's your what's your skill set here and we've all kind of pulled together and and created a plan uh, of how we could make it work if that is the scenario it's worked really well how do you um facilitate that communication and organization between one another um so at the moment we've been having using zoom um and just having the conversations and kind of everyone's just brought to the table what they foresee their scenario to be and created a date line of where there could be the clashes and where people think they could help um, with different aspects of the event. And we've just tried to map out a timeline really and create a schedule of where people could slot in and help. Um, I don't know if that's something that you feel could work with, with you, but it's, it's good to just have that reassurance that you, that you could all work together. Yeah, I think that's something we'd like to follow up with you, um, perhaps with Claire, um, uh, sort of in, in the loop, and we can find out some more more details. Um, I I think we've got about five minutes left, um, and I did just want to kind of um, talk about Evcom briefly and what we can, um, what we what we'd like to try and do at the moment to help freelancers. Um, Evcom is a voluntary association. Um, they're really we we run it on a on a shoestring, and and all the board members give their time for free, etc. Um, so unfortunately, there isn't sort of a way that we can pull a, a financial fund together or anything. Although that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Like Netflix and things are doing. Um, but what what we were talking about um, uh, yesterday and and a bit today is basically making a commitment to all the freelancers 
to um, uh, to basically put you forward to all the production companies that are on our membership database. So, for example, I um, try and carve out time in normal times once once a week to uh, or to, to to meet with um, new people and new new talent. Um, however, I thought after this, I want to really challenge myself and commit to meeting at least six new people every fortnight. So that's three people a week. And whether that be a virtual meeting or um, or a face-to-face -face meeting eventually. Um, so I thought as using Evcom's influence and our connections of all the different production company owners that are on the board, um, we thought that if all the freelancers can update their CVs and and um, use the membership directory to to isolate three, uh, five production companies that you've always wanted to get a meet and greet with or get some time with. Um, if, if you send those suggestions to us, we will um, commit to getting you those interviews and those meet and greets with, with various people at those production companies, whether it be Media Zoo, The Edge, A Vision, Gorilla Gorilla, whoever you've always wanted to get a foot in the door with or a meet and greet, we want to commit to helping you schedule those meetings with those people. I think that's a great idea. And I think that would be very useful for people, so obviously slightly younger than perhaps me and Tim, who, you know, uh, in the earlier part of their careers and getting the foot in the door is, is the hardest thing and, um, and getting those introductions. Um, I always say to myself, it's harder to get the work than it is to actually do it these days. And, uh, you know, that doesn't change. I think I think that's a, a great initiative that if the EVCOM could provide that through the directory, I think that would be, uh, would be huge. Uh, so, yes. If, so if I could just interject at this point um, and say, uh, having discussed this with Sarah, we are uh, very happy to um, facilitate that and um, make sure that we get the message out. We don't have uh, a clear idea yet of, of, of how we're gonna do that, but it will be, a, um, we, shall, we shall be the portal which gets all of the requests in and then we shall put them out to the, to the relevant parties. Um, I also- uh, Everybody's details who's on this webcast. Um, so after this, we'll work out the logistics of that and sort of set a deadline as well of when you'll need to submit your your, your wishes of who you want to get in front of, um, and then we'll start to schedule that. We've got a board meeting, I think, next week, so I'll be spearheading this at the board table and making every single person around that table commit to it, as well as um, uh, getting in touch with various other people in the directory who I feel will get behind this. I know they will. Um, you know, like I said, we rely on you freelancers, and we want to see you back in our business, and we want to meet more of you as well. Um, so I definitely think this is something that we can follow through with over the coming weeks, um, particularly where we've got a lot of business owners at home um, doing Zoom meetings. It's a, it's a really good time to get you in front of people um, because, you know, they're not distracted with, with other things at the office. And I also very much like the idea of um, showcasing a different freelancer, uh, Laura. I think you mentioned that. Um, I think that's a great idea. So I will discuss with my colleague Amelia and we'll see how we can introduce something like that to our site because I think that's that's a really cool idea. Um, just can I, um, can I conscious... just take Sarah, that you said before, and we, we, we haven't mentioned this at all, but, but um, it's not to do with, 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 with those brilliant ideas, but um, you mentioned that if people are going to further themselves or they need universal credit or the, the packed website, um, which I looked at from when we last spoke yesterday to today, is full of, you know, if you are looking for financial support, the PAC website has every single resource you would need to do that. And that following yourself is not as bad as it may seem, particularly if you're a, you're a sole trader limited company like myself, you can get some of your salary um, paid and it doesn't prevent you from working for another company. You can't work for your own company anymore but you can go and get a part-time job and work or volunteer or do anything for another employer. And, and, and I think there's a lot of miscommunication out there about, you know, what financial support is available, but, you know, if you do need financial support, then then go to the PAC website and that will point you into the right areas of the government websites where there is help available. It doesn't prevent you from doing other work. 
and and you know increasing your your income in in whatever means possible sorry claire i interrupted so i was just mindful of the of the time and there's one or two questions that i wanted to put um that have come through um so uh, i'll do the uh the first two because they sort of link um what uh, for each of you uh, what will the industry look like post uh, covid 19 um and the big um the big million dollar question is will the budgets still be there post covid 19 um so perhaps just get a view from from all of you on those two well i'll go first on the on what the industry is going to look like i i think there's going to be less travel and i think particularly for events um and i'm make a lot of videos for event event companies I, I i see those events going ahead and i see the the country in which the event is taking place being attended by those people in that country but i do not see the amount of global travel that we had um taking place ever again in the future i think the amount you know the sort of lawyers and bankers who fly around the world sort of collecting air miles badge of honor i think those days are over and I think um, that that's going to impact the event industry. It's a, it's a hunch, it's a guess, but I think that the events will take place still, and a lot more that need you know any 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 audience that needs to come in from other parts of the world, from Australia for a UK event, is going to become an audience like this, like a virtual one, because these systems work really well, and it's been proven that we can all continue and, and carry on. Um, I think for film location, I think. Obviously, travel has still has to take place, and that that that, that um, will continue. But I think people are going to look at budgets very carefully because of the the economic um, uh, decline our country and every other country is going to go through after this event. I just want to add to what Gavin said. I, I'm I'm quite sure budgets are going to be there's going to be less because companies are going to be cash strapped and but again that's an opportunity for us especially as freelancers because i think they're really good at making uh money work on the screen and i think the other thing that's going to change is the kind of content that they're going to commission i think there's going to be less it's going to be much more reflective and it's there's going to be a, a legacy from what we're going through in the ter in terms of the way companies think about their values what they stand for how they communicate with their employees um, so the kind of content they're going to want to see, I think it's going to shift a little bit in the future. I, I agree with Sorry. <laughs> so I think um, the new normal will emerge fairly quickly. For me, um, in t uh, below the line communications, what we do as, as corporate filmmakers um, has, has even more place um in this in this in the creative industries than it ever ever has above the line spend commercials and are, are not going to bounce back as quickly because companies need internal communications to motivate their workforce and inspire their workforce so below the line content is becoming more valuable than above the line content because consumer, consumers don't want to be marketed products that aren't relevant to them or or have a have a need in society so um, I think there's plenty of reasons to believe that um, the future will be very, very bright after this. And I think there's going to be plenty of work out there. Laura? Yes. Um, I wanted to um, completely agree with Gavin, and I think that events will change in terms of travel. Um, and I think that event companies, they will adapt and be more cautious now I, when it comes to deciding what event to launch or what to run. I think it's making everyone kind of look at their portfolios and what they what they want to achieve from them. Um, so I think from, from my side, from freelancers, I think it's a really positive thing for us. They're going to reach out to our expertise. Um, we have so much more knowledge because we work on different portfolios all the time, not just working for one company, or at least I work for different clients. Um, so I think that gives us an advantage um and clients may lean on us more for help with that yeah um th there's one more question which i'm also keen to hear if anyone's got the uh, perfect answer to which was um in terms of digital platforms uh, to run hybrid events um does it you know this is one of the questions that more and more people are trying to do this kind of thing does anyone have any recommendations 
this is WebEx, uh, the one that we're using, but yeah, uh, I think everybody's looking for the perfect um, platform. So all suggestions, welcome. <laughs> I don't know whether anyone has any right now. Uh, I mean, we prefer WebEx. Um, I find Zoom is a bit, um, the bandwidth's a bit temperamental sometimes. Um, so we prefer to use WebEx, seems to have a smoother connection most of the time. I'm, I'm is it? We prefer Zoom. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're, all, they're all pretty good. I mean, yeah. Zoom's more fun because you can change your backgrounds and put a face filter on and do some other yeah. kind of fun stuff. So, face filters. Can you make me look 20 years younger? Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't have to, uh, you know, I don't know, brush your hair or whatever. Okay, right. I think at this point um, it's it's now uh, four fifty, so we should possibly um, uh, call it a day. Um, I would like to thank everybody for um, contributing. Um, I'd like to thank all the panelists, Tim, Dara, Gavin, and Laura, and I'd like to thank all our attendees uh, for um, joining us on this afternoon. And hopefully, we'll see you at uh, see you and hear you. Um, at another event uh, coming soon. We have a whole series of these coming up. So um, we hope you'll join us again further down the road. Yes. And I look forward to meeting more of you. Yeah. And good luck, everybody. Keep an eye on the EFCOM website and we will, uh, we will uh, post something as to how to access the, the sort of the booking system to, to get in to see some production companies. Thank you very much, Great stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much everybody.